Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another unboxing and today I'm taking a look at the high grade ARX 7 and XL2 booster. Of course, this is from Full Metal Panic and by Bandai Spirits. So this is my first time taking a look at one of these kits. I have built the standard version of the Arbalest here. I just haven't gotten around to the review because of the massive backlog that I have, but I will review both of these guys at the exact same time because essentially they're the same kit with some differences. But anyway, let's move him to the side and take a look at this right here. So first off, there is a quick look at the box art, looking very nice. There is the Arc 7 Arbless taking off, and all in all, looking pretty cool so far. Taking a quick look at the first side of the box, right here we have some images of the front and back of the kit. That right there is what we're expecting to see once it's finished. Of course, it's just like the standard version of the Arbalest, this time around with that backpack, and it's just in grey. We've got a little picture there from the anime as well as a little bit of a blurb, spinning that around to the other side of the box. And on here, we have a close-up rear image of what that will look like once it's built. It seems like we've got a lot of nice detail here on the XL2 booster. And it says down there, intricate, settings, balance, and stylish proportions have been recreated under the supervision of mecha designer Kanetaka Ebikawa. There we have some info on the weapons. We've got the 57mm shotgun as well as the molecular cutter. Parts for sticking the knife onto the front of the face. The groin has a pull-out gimmick. <laughs> There's a weapon in here which is unique to this model kit. That is this right here. This light defense weapon. And of course in here we have the XL booster. And what's pretty awesome is we do get an action base 5 in here for displaying it which is pretty damn awesome. So busting it open bottom first so we can get to that manual. So there's the manual, same image as the cover art. Flipping it around to the back here and we've got the same images once again, as well as a couple of blurbs. First about the ARX-7 Arbalest itself. This mainly talks about why this one is a gray as opposed to in color. And we've got some information down here on the XL2 booster and the fact that this was just an experimental idea and not actually made into a mass production unit. So both of those are up there right now. And we've got a bit of a blurb at the bottom here from this commander guy. And this is just about why it's not painted once again. So the vast majority of the blurbs on this is why it's in grey. But anyway, down there at the bottom we've got the painting guide. Next up there is the parts list. And for something that is essentially the size of a high grade Gundam, this comes with a ridiculous amount of parts. Like I mentioned already, these are pretty cool kits. So anyway, let's take a look at the runners. Onto the runners, here is runner A. We've got two of these. This is 2018 160th scale arm slave. So this we would have seen before already and definitely saw before in the standard Arbalest. This right here is in a very light brown. Runner B, once again, 160th scale arm slave. This is in a more pure gray, Less brown in this, but still a little bit towards brown. Runner C now, once again, we have two of these. Once again, 160th scale Arm Slave 2018. And this is in an almost black, but it has a brown hue. It seems in general, this kit will have a bit of a brown hue in the end. So there is Runner D, and there's that weapon that it said was unique to the model kit. And, well, it isn't, because you can see right here, it did just come with the standard Arbalest. So I think it means it is unique to the model kits, not to this particular model kit because we have seen it before. But anyway, that is in that dark, almost black brown. So there is runner E. Once again, this is from 2018. There are two of these runners and this is in that light gray again, once again with a brown hue. There is runner F, more of what we've been seeing before. That is that very light gray. And this is another 2018 runner. Next up, runner G, again from last year. And this is the shot cannon. There is runner H1, once again in that mid-tone gray. Runner H2 in that dark, almost black. And finally, getting into what makes this kit unique. This is Runner RB1. This is brand new for this year, Bandai Spirits 2018. And this is parts from the XL2 booster. Runner RB2, that is again new for this year. More parts of the XL2 booster. And this is in the exact same color as RB1. RB3 there, we've got two of those. That is in a slightly darker tone of grey. Next up then, we've got that full action base. This is in a solid black with all the options. This is pretty cool. I always love when this is added. Next up, we've got a set of polycaps from 2013. And lastly then is this set of decals. So there's not a whole lot here when it comes to color correcting stickers. We've got the eyes. And as for the other stickers, those are just for on the waist unit. Two is for on the crotch and three is for on the butt flaps. And that is it for the unboxing. So far, so good. And the entire body of this kit, the standard mecha itself, is exactly what we saw with the older Arbalest. Of course, this time it is in a grey, but it's mainly grey moved towards brown a bit. A warm grey, as you will. As well as that, 
What's new to this kit compared to the other one is we do have a full action base and that XL booster. All in all, this is more like the color scheme we would have seen on the Gurren's back and stuff like that. So it will match perfectly with those kits. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. And as always, I'll see you next time.